to uh, today's sharing. My name is uh, Wekesa Wafula. I'm a student from the Paul Seminary here in Nairobi, Kenya. And as we go into the period of Lent, we'd like to share with you a Vincentian message about the plight of the poor during this Lenten period. Now, Jesus in the Gospel of John tells Judas Iscariot in one of those scenarios when Mary goes to anoint Jesus with expensive oils. For Judas Iscariot, it is a wastage of the expensive oils. And he asks Jesus, why can't the lady sell the oil and give the money to the poor? Jesus responds by saying, you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is Jesus' response to Judas Iscariot, and not only to Jesus Iscariot, but to the church and to us who are his disciples, that the poor are always with us. This, uh, this verse presents to us an all-time reality that we find ourselves in. That you look on your left, you look on your right, you look around you, there's always someone who is lacking in something, either spiritually, either materially, or needs some conversation with you, needs some listening ear from you, he needs someone to lean on. These are the poor we are talking about. The Vincentian understanding of the poor is not limited just to material realities, but also to spiritual lacking, psychological lacking, and all the forms of lacking that we have, some forms of deficiencies that a human person can find himself in, himself or herself in. With Jesus' words, the permanent existence of the poor is confirmed. The church today, the Catholic church today in immensity, finds herself in, the, in a document, contemporary document, explaining about this reality, about the preferential option for the poor and a prophetic call to justice, justice in solidarity with them. For example, Pope Francis in Evangelium Gaudium, number 48, The Joy of the Gospel, he writes, If the whole church takes up this missionary impulse, she has to go forth to everyone without exemption. But to whom, to whom should she go first? When we read the gospel, we find a clear indication, not so much our friends and wealthy neighbors, but above all, the poor and the sick, those who are usually despised and overlook, overlooked, those who cannot repay you. Pope Francis quotes Luke 14, 14. St. Vincent de Paul, a man of 17th century, as he goes about, as we read his story and his life and his words, we see a man who goes about doing good, and as he goes about doing good, he meets and works in Gali estates, estates of the Degondis. Five centuries, over five centuries ago, he works with the prisoners, those people who have no freedom, whose freedoms are curtailed because of different things that they have undergone and which they are judged against, and these people who need his mercy, people who are in need not only of his spiritual, uh, spiritual uh, help, but also of his physical help. St. Vincent de Paul shows so much mercy and compassion with them. He works with them, he visits them, not just as a priest to serve their physical, their spiritual needs, but much importantly also, their physical needs. St. Vincent de Paul sees many men and women today walking in his spirit. He inspires many men and women all over the world today to walk in his spirit, to follow his example, and go about helping the people who are prisoners, prisoners of very many things, of social injustices, uh, prisoners uh, who, uh, who are always in a lack of something. They always lack, they lack the prisoners who are always lacking something. And in a way, St. Vincent de Paul challenges our contemporary world, challenges us today, Vincentian men and women, and the entire church, that as we go about our daily livings, there's always something that we can do for these people who are always in our midst. St. Vincent de Paul called the poor the lords, our lords and masters the people whom we should pay homage to, the people who should matter to us the most. 
St. Vincent de Paul in the Catholic Church is being recognized as the heavenly patron of all charitable, charitable works and the apostle of the poor. He worked, he organized charities, he organized fraternities so that he can see that all these people whom he encounters in his, in his apostolate are always having something to eat. They are not just fed spiritually, but also their physical needs are met. Today, this is a call to us that our plight should go with the poor, that our daily activities should have the poor in mind, that the poor should always exist within our line of sight, that as we go about in our daily activities, just as Jesus who goes about doing good, that we can also go about doing good in our own ways, smaller and greater alike, non and unknown alike, there's always something that we can always do for them. Today, as we get into the Lenten period, the Lenten period speaks so much to us Vincentians and to all those who follow the example of St. Vincent de Paul to look with the eyes of mercy towards the poor, with the eyes of compassion towards the poor, so that as we go in alms giving, we have them in mind. There's always something that we can give to them, that we can share with them, and most importantly, our presence to them is much, much needed. Today, as we follow the example of St. Vincent de Paul, a man of 17th century, but so relevant in our 21st century, we pray that we become other Vincents in our contemporary world. We pray that as Jesus goes about doing good in the first century, in the Pal a Palestinian Jew who walks in the streets, who interact with different people, that as he goes about uh, elevating their lives, helping them in different ways, that this man, Jesus Christ, being inspired with him and his spirit, that we become other Christs to the people that we are always meeting. We pray during this period of Lent that it be an inspirational moment, that the poor have a place in us and they continue existing within our line of sight. Thank you and God bless you.